What is a dual fuel unit? Today we're going to learn what a dual fuel unit is. We're going to learn about the wiring, uh, different commissioning processes that I have to do when I install, when I commission this unit. Uh, it's propane, so we have a propane kit. We're going to talk about the propane kits. Let's get started. Today you're watching Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad, and we're talking about dual fuels. So let's take a look at the unit, talk about what it is first. This right here is a package dual fuel made by York. It's a 14 sear, it's single stage compressor, so we don't have two stage compressor. This right here is the reversing valve. A dual fuel unit is a heat pump, but it uses a backup heat that's not emergency heat, that's not electric heat strips, right? It's gas. So it's either natural gas or propane. Today we are starting up a propane dual fuel package unit. I recommend you use natural gas, but if you can't get it, propane is, I guess, a little bit better than electric heat strips. And that right there is the regulator. So this right here is a pressure switch. It's got a little quarter inch fitting that goes into this uh, quarter inch by half uh, reducer that goes into my half inch black iron pipe. I've got my uh, manometer out here made by field piece, dual port manometer and pressure switch tester. And the reason I have this is because I was checking the outlet pressure to make sure that I had my gas valve set properly uh, to burn the right amount of fuel. And that is, is 10 inches of water column for propane. You are, you're at three and a half inches on the outlet side for natural gas. If you wanna know more about checking gas pressure, check out my playlist tips for technicians. I have a video on there about setting gas pressure and checking it, okay? So if you wanna learn, check it out. So this is the pressure switch. Has to be installed when you have a propane kit and a propane dual fuel package unit. The reason being is because the pressure switch, once the pressure gets below a certain point and your tank is empty, then your gas will no longer fire uh, because, of course, this will break the circuit to the flame sensor. Okay, that right there is the flame sensor. So it's run in series with that flame sensor and it's not going to sense flame so it's not going to light and why is that good that's good because if we're burning at such a low pressure we're going to soot up our heat exchanger so we're going to cause a lot of issues and this is going to be expensive and time consuming for not only the customer but also you so this right here is the outdoor sensor see this this is an outdoor sensor all right and i've got some paperwork on this i'll actually show you if you're interested looking at what sensor this is as far as parting. This is the outdoor sensor that I used, a Bay Sense. It's a B-A-Y S-E-N 01A10. This is an outdoor sensor number. I got this wired into the brown and the black going to my thermostat. As far as the wiring, we've got our red and our common, which is our 24 volts. We've got our white, which is our call for our auxiliary heat, which is our gas heat. We've got our orange wire, which is reversing valve, yellow wire, which is a cooling call. We got our green wire, fan call, and that's how the wiring is on this unit. And that right there is where the plug is for the 24 volt wiring going into the board. So, it's a heat pump with gas backup heat. And that's what a dual fuel is. So now we're gonna talk about the thermostat. We used the honey, we're gonna go inside and take a look in just a minute but you hit a balance point and that balance point means that the outdoor temperature during the winter falls below a certain point which is usually below 30 degrees and that point is where the load of the structure okay is now exceeded the load or capacity of the equipment so you need your backup heat to hit the balance point okay the backup heat is gas heat if we turn our thermostat on emergency heat we're going to be using the gas which is great but propane not that great. Why? Because companies gouge when it uh, when it's winter time. They're, you're paying more for the propane, and sometimes it takes them forever to come out to your home to get you back up and going. Let's go in and take a look at the thermostat and go ahead and program it. Show you the setup. We've set this to 40 degrees. You need to ask the customer, hey, what do, what do you what would you like? 40? Would you like 30? Some customers don't like the heat pump heat at all. They want, when it gets down to 50 degrees, they want it to switch on over. So you have the capability uh, by enabling the outdoor sensor in the T4 installation instructions, you'll be able to find how you can program the thermostat and set up all the steps. 
but let's go ahead and take a look at that and I'll show you more. All right, let's look at the thermostat programming. This right here is the T6 Honeywell programmable thermostat. Three heat, two cool heat pump, two heat, two cool conventional. 24 volt or battery. Now, this right here is the front display. This is where our wiring goes. This is our S and S terminal. You gotta choose two wires you wanna use for your outdoor sensor, and this is where it wires into. Then you've got your reversing valve, which is O if it energizes in cooling, B if it energizes in heating. You'll know based off the manufacturer of the equipment. Like Ream, it would be B, okay? Rudd, it would be B. York, American Standard Train, it would be O. W2 is where your uh, auxiliary heat uh, wire would go. So this is what energizes. When this terminal is energized, this energizes your backup heat. So this would be your gas. If it was a regular heat pump, it would be electric heat strips. All right, now we've got red, which is one side of our 24 volts. Common, which is the other side. G, which energizes our fan. Y, which energizes our cooling. And that's about it for the wiring, okay? So close that there. Now, so to enter the advanced setup options, you're gonna hit the menu and plus button, okay? So when the thermostat's powered, hit the menu and plus button, boom, you hold it for three seconds. All right, to enter the programming mode, hit the menu and the plus button. ISU should come up, hit select. It's gonna be non-programmable. You're gonna hit select, okay? Select is gonna be right here. So. What do we need to set for dual fuel? First thing we need to set is we need to go to step 130 and we, we need to make it one so we have our wired outdoor sensor, okay? Then we need to go to 200 heating system type. It's a heat pump, so we put it on two. Heating equipment type 205, we would make that air to air heat pump, okay? Because it is an air to air heat pump. Reversing valve, whether it energizes in O or heat B, we would make that, usually it's O for me, so zero. Cool stages. How many compressor stages do you have? I only have one. All right, go up here. Backup heat stages. Is it is it single stage gas or two stage gas? Mine's single stage. All right, how are we going to control the heat? Is there built-in controls? Oh, this is for the fan. All right, that's just going to be uh, default usually. All right, drive both auxiliary heat and E together. That's going to be O. Don't have to worry about that. Now, this is where you need to make sure that you make this proper setting. Backup heat source, heat pump only, gas. So usually it would be electric, now it's gonna be gas, okay? We have gas backup or fossil fuel. Emergency heat source, gas. External fossil fuel kit, thermostat controls backup heat. We're gonna put thermostat controls backup heat, okay? So zero, that's exactly what you need. You need to make sure the thermostat controls backup heat or if you have an external fossil fuel kit that controls backup heat, then you need to put one. But I'm using the wired thermostat and I'm programming this to control the backup heat, okay? So I would hit thermostat controls backup heat and that's where you would go into it more. You would go down here and you'd put compressor lockout balance point. At what temperature do you wanna lock out the compressor? Now, some customers want it at 50, some want it at 40. I usually put mine at uh, 40 and that's a good temperature for me. Outdoor lockout backup heat. Do you wanna lock out the backup heat? I wouldn't suggest that, okay? That's not very smart. So, you can change your cycle rate, but this is as far as it goes. When If you set this correctly to your temperature, if you have set the um, backup heat source correctly, if you have set up your outdoor sensor, you know, wired sensor correctly, then you should be in good shape and the unit should work. Um, if you want to test it, what you do is you turn it into emergency heat. Very easy. Go to your thermostat, push the mode button until it says emergency heat and you're good to go. Mode button would be right there on that thermostat. All right. This is a PHG4A30075, so it's a two and a half ton because it's 30,000 BTUs, and then it's 75,000 BTU heating. So 30,000 BTU cooling, 75,000 BTU heating. Do not neglect your installation instructions because there is a lot of good information that'll help you be able to wire a dual fuel system. Just like this right here, how it's labeled S, outdoor sensor. Do not use this terminal for heat pump applications. There's different things that are very helpful in the installation instructions. Do not neglect it. So a couple things I wanted to talk about when it comes to the low gas pressure switch that I installed 
And I also have another video about this. If you'll check out my playlist, HVAC Tips for Technicians, I have a video on the propane kit by Source One that I installed on this dual fuel. But you're supposed to wire the pressure switch for the inducer motor in series with that low gas pressure switch so that the unit never fires, right? I've got it wired into the flame sensor, which is fine but the unit would never fire if it was wired into the pressure switch. If it's wired in the flame sensor, it's gonna fire, but it's not gonna sense flame. So is there a problem with this? The way I've got it wired, no. But is it correct? No, it's not. It needs to be wired into the pressure switch. So it says connect the orange wire from the low gas pressure switch to the terminal on the low heat pressure switch, okay? You can see that right there. So I just wanna clarify, just so that you guys that are out there like, whoa, what, why do you have it wired in the flame sensor? It's okay. So this right here is something that you get should get with the propane kit and I just want to talk about it just because for those that don't know this is the regulator spring and you have a different regulator spring for natural gas than you do with um, propane. Uh, with propane the spring has much more tension with natural gas it has much less tension but you have to take your regulator seal cap and your regulator adjustment screw out to actually put the new spring in when you get a propane kit. That's something I wanted to go over before I uh, finish this video. So I hope this video helps. I hope you learned something. I hope it helps you with your career in the HVAC industry. If you have specific questions, leave them in the comments. I'm always down to help. I always answer everyone's comments and I really appreciate all my subscribers. If you haven't subscribed, it's very easy. Just click the subscribe button. That helps me. You personally help me if you hit the like, notification, that little bell, or the subscribe button. And if you want to support me, become a member. Hit the join button because that really helps me to cater to whatever type of question, whatever content you need. Thank you so much for watching. You've been watching Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad, and remember, I'll keep you cool if you let me.